Hello and welcome or welcome back to my knitting channel. My name is Juliette and I'm a PhD student in Cambridge and this is the space where I talk all things knitting. Now for today's knitting podcast, I apologize if I sound a little bit tired. It's because this is my second time filming this because the first time around I filmed the whole thing and then realized the audio wasn't working properly. So if I like frantically look at this side, it's because my audio thing is right there, uh, my microphone uh, system and um, yeah, <laughs> just have to repeat myself for a second time basically. So uh, today I have one finished object to share with you and a couple of works in progress as well as a good few acquisitions and some knitting plans as well. If this sounds all good to you, let's get started. As always, I will have everything linked in the description below. Uh, so my Instagram, which I'm quite active on, uh, you'll get more up-to-date live versions of like my knitting progress and plans and a few um, knitting thoughts and whatnot in my stories. And I also have my Ravelry where I keep track of all my knitting project details and my stash and my knitting queue. So you can check all those things out um, if you're interested and they'll be linked in the next description below. So, uh, without further ado, let's start with my finished object, which you might have guessed is what I'm wearing today. So, this is the Mabel Wrap by Handmade by Florence. And so, it's got this lovely wrap construction uh, with a drop shoulder, very slight drop shoulder, with a lovely shoulder seam right here. Um, quite tight-fitting uh, sleeves. And the wrap, you can choose to have it either go on the inside so the garment is nice and flat behind, or you can have the wrap the other way around when you construct the uh, straps, the double knitted straps. So you, the, uh, this side wraps on top and you've got the tie that goes all the way around your back from the outside. So I've chosen to have it on the inside. It's got all these lovely double knitted edge and double knitted straps detail and some single uh, one by one rib for the edge of the body uh, as well as the sleeves. So I've made my sleeves nice and long for once. <laughs> so I've mentioned this in the previous knitting podcast, but I had a tendency to do my sleeves a little bit short. So this time I made sure to make it nice and long. And um, I'm really happy with this pattern. And with this finished garment, I think it hits at a bit on my hip where it's a perfect cropped look so I can have it with my high-waisted jeans and which is what I tend to wear on a daily basis. And the wrap is just nice. Um, I think the V is just enough. I've got this t-shirt underneath but I feel like I could also have a, a v-neck uh, t-shirt or have this wrap honestly on its own because it's such a lovely yarn combination that I could have against my skin uh, comfortably. So let's talk about the pattern first. So this was actually a test knit for Handmade by Florence. So I've mentioned this in my previous podcasts. The deadline is actually next week for the test knit, but because I'm leaving for a trip tomorrow, I wanted to make sure that this was done this weekend. And also with the added bonus that if it's done this weekend, I can take this to my trip to Copenhagen, which I leave for tomorrow. So it's done, so I'm really happy. It means I'm gonna be able to show it off in the streets of Copenhagen, which <laughs> um, I heard that there's a lot of knitters in Denmark, so hopefully they, um, people can appreciate the fact that I'm wearing a hand-knitted garment. So this pattern was uh, initially knitted up by Florence last year, I believe, as a slightly more oversized version of the Robinson wrap. And I will talk more about the differences between the two patterns a little bit later. So the Mabel wrap, I think she called it the Mabel wrap because she knitted this card garden, uh, she knitted this cardigan to wear it during uh, one of the Mabels. So a Mabel in Cambridge is a, basically a very lavish party that goes on from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. and it happens in June. Uh, it's called a Mabel because it's to celebrate the end of exams, which used to end around May, and now with the undergrads tend to finish their exams in June, so they've kept the name Mabel and all the Mabels from um, the various colleges in Cambridge happen all on the same week called the May week, but the May week is in June. Go figure. But anyway, 
So even though it's sometime in uh, late or mid late June, British summers are such that in the evening it's still pretty chilly basically. So I've gone to Mabel myself last year and you do have to think about layering pieces and so I think that's why she made this cardigan as a a um, nice wrap to put over your nice Mabel dress. But it still works out as a really lovely casual cardigan. I mean, I love this outfit right now with the high waist jeans, as I mentioned. The little bow is so cute. And I actually like the fact that the bow is done with double knitted straps. So let's talk about the differences between this pattern and the Robinson wrap cardigan pattern. So I believe that Florence initially made this based on the Robinson wrap by herself and the Robinson wrap is a much more fitted garment. It's got three centimeters of positive ease whereas this is intended with 15 centimeters of positive ease. The details are also a little bit different. So the Robinson wrap is a raglan which this is a drop shoulder construction both from the top down but for example another small difference is that the tie is double knitted straps for the Mabel wrap whereas the Robinson wrap has I-cord straps for the tie. The gauge is also very slightly different. This has a 20 stitch gauge, so like a heavy DK weight uh, for the garment, whereas the Robinson wrap is a 21 stitch gauge, so a true DK. I knitted it up in a strand of fingering weight merino and uh, lace weight uh, mohair, which is kind of what she did with the sample that she made and the Robinson wrap is also in a similar um, yarn combination but with small needles so I think the Robinson wrap requires would re I mean for like a true DK weight gauge if you don't have too loose or too tight knitting tension you'd usually require four millimeter needles whereas this is on four and a half millimeter needles so as you can see the it's a bit more of a slightly gapier look than a typical DK weight uh, jumper with this sort of yarn combination but I, I really don't mind I think the mohair it is just filling up any sort of transparency that it might have in the garment and yeah the pattern as always is very enjoyable this is my second time test knitting for Florence and she's a great pattern writer I really like her designs I feel like they're really modern and also quite simple, not never too complicated. And I feel like this is definitely more of a complicated construction and yet it's still uh, kept very simple when she writes her pattern. So yeah, very satisfying with the test knit and very satisfying with the garment. Now the yarn I've mentioned in a few uh, episodes already now, it's Sunday Scar and Sunday, the petite knit edition called Perfect Purple. Uh, the color number is uh, 5012 and held with Filco Alatilia in the color 353 uh, Freesia. Now, having washed and blocked this, I have to say I'm so happy with this yarn combination. It is wonderfully soft and drapey and it just feels amazing against my skin. There isn't a single feeling of itchiness from Tilia. And I'm not like, I don't not, I tolerate mohair and I have, knitted with drops mohair before and like I don't have a problem with it but I do feed it against my skin and sometimes there's a slight itch whereas this one just feels like a cloud against my skin I don't feel any sort of itchiness at all it's very soft and very not itchy so I feel like everyone talks about knitting for the soft silk mohair as like a holy grail of mohair but I feel like Tilia should be more hyped up as well I don't see people mention it as much um and I feel like it deserves a, a good spot in the Mohair uh, Hall of Fame, basically. So in terms of price point, it's about the same as Soft Silk Mohair, but by Knitting for Olive. But if your color choices are a bit different from the color palette the Knitting for Olive uh, offers, then Filco and Antilia might be a good alternative. They do more like poppy intense color not puppy sorry they do more intense saturated colors uh, in their tilia collection compared to the knitting for olive mohair so if you're looking for something very soft i think i would highly recommend this i haven't tried soft silk mohair but i do intend on uh, acquiring some in copenhagen so i'll make sure to do a comparison of the both of them when i've knitted up a garment 
and KFO soft silk mohair as well. The uh, Sunnest Garden Sunday has really plumped up nicely after blocking. I feel it's bloomed very nicely, basically. And it's so, so very soft. Uh, the garment did um, grow a little bit, but that's always the case with uh, washing and blocking. But it's still, I feel like it's still kept its shape very well. And I'm really looking forward to how this is going to wear uh, with these two together. So yeah, highly recommend this combination of yarn. It also makes it slightly more um, like financially interesting using Sunday's Garden Sunday because I feel like it's got the same sort of properties as Knitting for Olive Merino, which like I know that Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Mocha is kind of a, a very gold standard yarn combination for any sort of DK or heavy DK weight garment. But I feel like Sunday's Garden Sunday is also a great alternative and it's a little bit cheaper than knitting for olive merino so yeah highly recommend this one as well and this combination so yeah i've used just on i've used how many did i use i've just i've used four balls of knitting for it sorry i'm getting confused with the names i used four balls on sunday which was a lot less than i expected because I was expecting to use five, maybe six. So I, that's great because I have two balls of these left over, which might be perfect for a summer top, a very cropped one, or a hat, maybe. And then I have one and a, a very large, just, I have just under two balls of Tilia left over. Yes, just under two balls of Tilia left over. I don't really know what I'll do with that. I might, you know, sell it or donate it, who knows. So yeah, that's my May ball wrap and I'm so happy with it. Very excited to be wearing this in Copenhagen next week. And um, yeah, super excited to <laughs> um, wear it in my knitting club as well because I've been working on this on most knit nights uh, lately. So yeah, it will be nice to wear the finished version. Now, this is my only finished object of this episode because these past two weeks I was quite busy finishing this and I didn't really get... Nothing in my other whips were like close to finishing and I don't knit that quick. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't finish anything else is the bottom line. But I did have a fresh cast on as of a... two days ago. So yeah, moving on to my works in progress. Let's talk about this one. So this is knitting, and um, I keep saying knitting for olive now, this is so bad. This is the petite knit cumulus blouse, which I've mentioned in my spring summer knitting plans as something that I wanted to knit up pretty soon. And I mean, that's happening, so that's great. I'm glad that I'm sticking to my plans basically. It's setting up in uh, Camaro's Midnight Soul. This is the color Lee's Puder, but I'm also going to be using two other colors as like color blocks in the body and the sleeves. Um, but I'm starting with the pink because I think it will be really nice. It's my favorite color out of the three that I have and it will be nice to have the pink at the top basically of the yoke. Now the I'm at the bit in the pattern where basically when you cast on you're knitting flat for a while to do the raglan increases as well as the v-neck shaping and once you're done with the v-neck then you finally get to join in the round and I'm really looking forward to that bit because I really don't enjoy <laughs> knitting flat. And especially with like two strands of lace weight yarn, it's on five millimeter needles. So it's like, it's a little bit difficult to do the pearl side. So I'm about halfway done with the pattern repeats uh, to get this part done before I get to join in the round. So I already, I did all of this in a day, which I know with raglans, it's like, Raglan construction gets you really going because at first you feel like you're making so much progress because there's fewer uh, stitches on your needles but the more um, progress you are do with the raglan increases the more stitches you have on your needles so it starts becoming a slower progress to get the yoke done basically but it is what it is I got all this done in a day so I'm going to be taking this on the trip to Copenhagen as my trip project so I'll work on this in the plane and stuff and in the evenings um, and yeah hopefully I get a lot of progress done on this hopefully I get to the um, knitting in the round very soon because yeah I don't really enjoy knitting flat 
says the girl who's wearing a cardigan which is knitting flat almost all the time but yeah I persevered for Florence um so the other work in progress that I want to share with you today is my cumulus tea now again it's like a cumulus something by Petit Knit um clearly I have a thing today so the cumulus blouse is like knitted with two strands of mohair and it's like a jumper and the cumulus tee is like a summer top right a summer t-shirt and i'm knitting it up in knitting fold of pure silk in the color cream so i've mentioned this in the spring summer knitting plans as a languishing knit that i wanted to get done this summer now is it <laughs> getting much progress not really because I put the marker when I mentioned it after I mentioned it in the spring summer plants and in the past three weeks this is all the progress that I got done on this now um, with this one right because I've been focusing on this ramp cardigan to finish up the test knit I've been picking this up um, here and there I suppose and I figured out that it actually takes me about 30 minutes to do one centimeters of this uh, body stocking it. So because I have 20 centimeters left, that uh, calculates up to 10 hours of knitting left on this. And the pure stick is like quite slippy and uh, splitty and it's knitted on three millimeter needles. So it's going to be a bit of a pain, but I will persevere, hopefully. So yeah, about t uh, 10 hours left on the body and then I'll do the sleeves, which I bet will go quite quickly. But basically now I've got the cumulus blouse to work on that I want to finish first. So this will probably still take a bit of a back seat while I finish the cumulus blouse and also my PhD vest. And then I'll make sure to focus on this uh, as the warmer gets, weather gets warmer. I really want to be wearing my uh, silk t-shirt. Now, in terms of the other works in progress, because, yeah, as I mentioned, I've been working mostly on this. I haven't really got much uh, progress on any of the other stuff that I might have mentioned in the previous episode. So that, sorry, I've got a scratchy nose from all the mohair. So that means I haven't got much progress on the PhD vest or the mountain walk chunky socks for my mum. So... I know I said that I was hoping that the vest will be done by the time I have to leave for Copenhagen, but I just had to get this one done first. And by the time I finished my May ball wrap cardigan, then, well, I finished it yesterday, basically. Well, no, actually, no, that's not true. I finished it today with the wrap ties. Um, the double, double knitted ties finished today. So, yeah, probably overshot a little bit when I said that I wanted to have both of them done for Copenhagen. But... It is what it is. Knitting is not a speed competition. And also, I'm not competing against every, anyone. And, you know, it's just me setting maybe some slightly unrealistic goals for myself. But I'm really happy that this is done. And I'll keep knitting on the vest. And I'll keep you guys updated on any sort of test knitting uh, application. And, yeah. So that's the works in progress for today's episode, but I do have a lot of acquisitions that I want to share with you today. So first thing first, um, so where to start? I basically recently had a bit of a sit down with my stash and because I realized that I was, you know, going to acquire a few things in Copenhagen and I also recently did this purchase uh, off of a yarn sale which is neat big here and so I needed to sit down and just like think about a few things and so I've gone through my whole stash and I uploaded it in my Ravelry if you want to check it out and I've assigned everything to uh, my knitting queue basically so that includes all my spring summer knitting plants which are slightly modified now because I decided not to do the poppy tea anymore I'll get to that a little bit later and I'm instead of doing a white top and as well as the mini mock neck tank. Sorry, the white top is a design by Panil Larsen, which is the designer for knitting for olive patterns. And I'm also going to knit up the 
Cumulosity, which I just mentioned, finished the camisole, the crescendo camisole by the Knit Pearl Girl, which is something I started last summer. And the I'll also do um, the mini mock neck tank by Jessie Made Design, as well as her My Little Secret Crop with a few stash yarns. So that was all well and fine. And I've also started adding things in my queue that I could make for this winter. Basically, I have enough yarn for like a year and a half worth of knitting which is driving me a little bit insane but in my queue if you do care to, <laughs> to check it you will see that it's a porcelain sweater and i've already knit the porcelain sweater so you might be asking why i'm knitting it again first of all lovely design and i've made the one where it's like a white background in the cobalt blue uh, contrast color but i see a lot of people doing it in green as a background and white as the accent on instagram and that always looked so lovely and I've always thought that maybe a second one in that color combination would be really nice. Now, coincidentally, I recently shared on my stories my adventures of sweater surgery on my porcelain sweater because the sleeves are too short. And for the first time, I tried, you know, cutting and knitting and grafting uh, a part of a sweater. And so, yeah, knitting surgery, as they like to call it on the Internet. And when I was sharing those on my Instagram, a follower reached out. Um, and they said that they were also quite frustrated by the porcelain sweater pattern because it didn't turn out the way they thought they would. And I had the same feeling as well. Now, the, um, the, the small detail basically is that the model wearing the porcelain tee for the pattern pictures is wearing it with 25 centimeters of positive ease. Whereas the pattern size recommendation is actually giving you a size recommendation that ends up with 15 centimeters of positive ease. There's like a 10 centimeter difference between what the model is wearing and what you end up uh, in terms of your finished look, which is quite a large discrep discrepancy because the model is wearing a jumper that looks really oversized and cozy. And what you end up with is something a bit more fitted. So still a little bit um, bigger than uh, you because it's got 30 centimeters of positive ease but it's a very different look from that very lofty oversized look that the model is having so um, I tried to adjust for that when I was first knitting my porcelain sweater with uh, knitting up a bigger size but because my gauge was off I still ended up with basically 11 centimeters of positive ease on my porcelain so I've been thinking about the fact that first I want to make one that's in a different color combination and second that I want to make sure that when I make the second one I get the lofty oversized look with 25 centimeters of positive ease as shown in the model pictures and the uh, follower so Lyra also had the same thought about all this and basically the bottom line is we both decided that we'd want to make a second one of the porcelain sweater as like a mini knit along together and we started in September when the weather starts to get colder uh, well, a little bit earlier than when the weather starts getting colder so that we can have um, finished jumpers by the time the weather is actually cold. And another coincidence is that Knit was having a sale on Tin Purgant, which is one of the uh, one of the recommended yarns for the pattern. So I picked them up. So this is Tin Purgant in the color 8082 uh, Hunter Green. And this is in the color 1002, which is just, I think, called white. Now, I think this I uh, caught, I bought the main color quantity for the green and contrast color quantity for the white. So that's like five balls of this and two balls of this for my size. Oh, crap. I forgot the fact that I wanted to size up. Oh, actually, no, no, no. I bought the right size. Okay. okay, okay. Did I? Yeah, I bought the right. Okay, I bought the right amount for the twenty-five centimeters of positive ease that I'm intending to have. Okay, so <laughs> so I took advantage of the fact that Knit was having a sale on these and a few other yarns, um, to buy this for the winter. Which I know is like it was really impulsive, basically. 
maybe it was just a 15 cent, 15% sale and maybe it wasn't justified, but we had just been talking about this with Lyra. So um, I thought it was too good of a coincidence. So I, I bought them up and I used them in the winter basically. And then um, <laughs> because I'm such an impulsive buyer, I also bought a sweater quantity of pure gint. Now I've been wanting to have a nice electric blue jumper and I've been wanting to do a jumper in pure gint, so those two things got combined in this purchase. So Jolly Blue is the name of the color. It's just such a joy, a joyful electric blue color. The color number is 6046. And basically the obsession with electric blue started when I saw Typical Bliss wear their typical sweater in double sunday electric blue which is a very similar color to this and they also have like black hair like me and we have like similar skin color and stuff so it looked great on them and so i thought it would be really nice to have a jumper in this color for myself as well so yeah knitting for uh i keep saying knitting for them. sweater quantity of pure gint i think it will be a, a nice um uh, hearty woolly jumper and I'm really looking forward to this. Now, I have another acquisition to share with you. It's actually a gift. And it's this beast. <laughs> so this is one kilo of cashmere in a cone. And it's this really wonderful subscriber that sent it to me. Just as a gift because they didn't need it in their stash anymore. And I am so grateful. Just again, thank you so much. You know who you are for sending me this. It's just such a wonderful gift. So they told me that it would kind of knit up to sport weight. And I did try a gauge swatch for this cashmere. And yeah, I got about 22 stitches gauge per, per 10 centimeter with using four millimeter needles. So I think, it, yeah, that does work up to sport weight or light DK weight. Uh, gauge and it's these three strands of this petrol green and olive green and yellow green that are applied together to make up this cashmere um, ply and it's just so soft it's so wonderful I've never knitted cashmere before and that's why I'm so extra grateful for this because it's such a lovely gift and yeah I'm really looking forward to knitting something up with this I will probably hold it on its own because I just want the wonderfulness of cashmere to really be the main focus of a, the garment that would I would knit with this and there's also a kilo in here which probably is enough to make two jumpers so maybe I will make a jumper for myself and my partner and we'll have matchy matchy cashmere jumpers basically I think it's a color that will suit us both so it would be really nice thank you so much again so um that was my kind of gifted acquisition and then the last acquisition i have to share with you is this so this is 52 weeks of socks by lane magazine volume 2 so you might remember if you've watched my previous podcast episode that i own the first volume of this uh, book which has Honestly, one of the best pricings in terms of knitting pattern books because you get 52 patterns for 17 or 18 or 19 pounds. 19 for this. And I've been eyeing it up for a while and I found it in my local Waterstones, so I picked it up very impulsively again. Have I made any uh, a large amount of patterns from the first volume to justify the second? No. Did I still buy anyway? Yes. <laughs> Will I ever knit all of them? Who knows, maybe in a lifetime. I'm also not really much of a sock knitter, so I don't really know what I'm doing, but it w I thought it would still be a nice coffee table book. So, um, But actually, I really like the patterns in this book, and probably more from this book than the first one, because I feel like the, the designs are a bit more modern, and they feature a lot more color work patterns in here. And as well as like a couple DK weight socks, which is a nice addition. So yeah, really excited for this. And it also features a yucca sock knitting pattern, which I'm really excited for because Handmade My Florence 
mentions their pattern a lot. It's one of their favorite sock knitting pattern designers. And it's one of their patterns is designed and featured in this book. It's this one. Ordinary Love by Yuka. It's got this lovely crisscrossing diamond thing pattern going down the center of the leg. And I'm really excited to knit this up, basically. And also Yuka is Japanese. So her name is Yuka Takahashi. And actually, no, the pattern is not Ordinary Love. It is, oh, berries and birds. Sorry, it's this one. Berries and bird tracks. Isn't this lovely? Yuka's Japanese and I'm also half Japanese, so it's nice to knit something up from someone from my own nation. Right, and then last but not least, sorry, my allergies are acting up and I feel, and also the mohair is not helping, so I'm having a scratchy nose and eyes. So the last thing I wanted to mention is um, not really like an acquisition, but rather a future plan, but way in the future. <laughs> so um, you might have mentioned, sorry. So you, if you watched the previous knitting podcast episode, I mentioned the Camel's Yarn Siri Silk Lace, which I've now wound up in a cake because I recently got a yarn swift and wider. And that meant that I could finally knit up this series silk with something held with it. And I got quite excited because, as I mentioned earlier, I don't intend on making the poppy tea anymore because my first intention was to make it with two strands of Sunday in this color 6050 above the clouds held together. And I actually thought about it a bit more and Actually, two fingering weight yarns to held together makes for a heavy DK. And the poppy tee requires a 24 stitch gauge. And I thought that to meet that gauge, I'll have to seriously size down in needle size. And it'll probably make a really dense fabric if I held these two together. So I renounced on the idea of making a poppy tee with this, but I still have eight balls of this in my stash. And then I looked at it and I looked at this and I was like, hold up, these work really well together or so I hoped and I did uh, a gauge swatch and I was right I think it works out really well together so since I have eight of these I will use five for jumper uh, held with this and then the three remaining will be a summer top um, simple as that and now it's the perfect quantity for it as well so it all works out fine. So this yarn that I purchased for the poppy tea has been now planned for two different garments, which is great. So this watch is wonderful. The Surrey is amazingly soft. I really get why Surrey is advertised as such a good mohair alternative. So not that I have a problem with mohair, as I said earlier, but it's really nice to have something this soft basically. And I think the color matching is perfect. So because some of the blues in this is kind of uh, mirrored in the Surrey variegation, it works out really well in the way that the you can still see the wonderful different colors that you get from the Surrey, hand dyed Surrey, which is like these like blues and moss greens and some purples in here, but um, it works out very uniformly together. So I'm feeling very inspired by the October sweater that Nina's knitted up, also in one hand-dyed yarn and one commercial yarn. And it's also kind of like a bluish uh, garment. And I think it will look really nice in this color as well. So yeah, very much taking inspiration from Nina's uh, to make an October sweater in this combination. And I will knit this up when the weather gets colder probably along the same time as I make the Porson 2.0. But yeah, this is way ahead of time, but I thought it would be nice to mention this since I mentioned the, the Siri in last time's acquisitions. So yeah, so I mentioned that I was initially intending to buy some yarn to go with this in Copenhagen, but since then I've decided to do something else um, in terms of what I'm gonna get for knitting for others because I've already found something that will go with this Siri. So I was gonna uh, get some dusty dove blue basically to go with this, but I think it's basically the same thing as this color. <laughs> so uh, I'll get other stuff 
in Copenhagen. But yeah, I'll share all the acquisitions from Copenhagen in a different video. So this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching all the way through uh, now. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, please do so. It will be really meaningful for me. And uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.